The last few weeks, we have been in a series called Community, emphasis on the unity there, where we've discussed friendship and what it means for us as followers of Jesus. Uh, week one, we went super basic, and from Ecclesiastes chapter four, we concluded that two is better than one, meaning that life and relationship uh, is better when we are in God-centered community. Week two, we looked at 1 Samuel chapter 20 and, and discussed the relationship of Jonathan and David. And we understood that true godly friendship, uh, it requires a unrelenting loyalty that's founded in sacrificial love. This week, we're going to continue with these thoughts as we look at two different relationships. So first, find your way to the book of Ruth. It's right after the book of Judges and right before the book of 1 Samuel in the Old Testament. I'll be reading from the CSB version if you want to follow along word for word. The book starts by talking about a woman named Naomi uh, who had a husband and she had two sons and the two sons both got married and one of them married the woman whose the book is named for, Ruth. Ruth was a Moabitess, meaning she was from Moab, and she married a guy named Elimelech. Top baby names from the 1100 BCs, Elimelech. Uh, and, and somewhere in the story of Ruth, and where it's not really stated how long after they got married, but Ruth loses her husband. He dies. And it's a tough thing, and it's really sad, because not only does Ruth's husband die, but the other brother who married a woman named Orpah, who was also from Moab, he died and Naomi's husband died. So we find here in the first five verses, three women who have lost their husbands. They are devastated and there's no one to support them during this time. And it's at this point that through the rest of the chapter, Naomi's in a really tough spot. She's lost both of her sons, she's lost her husband, and she, she offers the other two, hey, if you want to, you can go back to your family in Moab. I won't hold it against you. Orpah, the second uh, son's wife, she decides to go back to her family. But Ruth, Ruth feels differently. She's gonna stick with, she's gonna stick with Naomi as she travels to Bethlehem. Let's, listen to how she words this in verses 16 and 17 of Ruth chapter one. But Ruth replied, don't plead with me to abandon you or to return and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me and do so severely if anything but death separates you and me. These, these are some wonderful words that Ruth shares with Naomi. And we'll unpack these in a second, but hop over a few books to 2 Kings chapter 2. We're going to look at another relationship here, one of two friends, Elijah and Elisha. They had oddly similar names. These two have done ministry together for some time, and at this point in their story, that partnership is coming to an end. Not because of anything negative, but it was just time for Elijah to, to go home and be with the Lord. So let's read 2 Kings chapter 2 verses 1 through 6. The time had come for the Lord to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal, and Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. The Lord is sending me on to Bethel. But Elisha replied, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said, do you know that the Lord will take your master away from you today? He said, yes, I know. Be quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here. The Lord is sending me to Jericho. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. Then the sons of the prophets who were in Jericho came up to Elisha and said, do you know that the Lord will take your master away from you today? He said, Yes, I know. Be quiet. Elijah said to him, Stay here. The Lord is sending me to the Jordan. But Elisha replied, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Now, 
how many of you would uh, remember saying this to a friend or hearing this from a friend, this phrase? Hey, I understand if you don't want to be around me. Maybe it hasn't been those exact words, or maybe you've only thought it in pertaining to your friendships. But our anxiety about being an inconvenience to the people around us can cause us to think this way sometimes. Where we understand when we're going through a tough time, or maybe our friend has said this to us when they're going through a tough time, that they're like, I don't even want to be around me right now. So why would anybody else? We or our friends to us will sometimes push people away uh, because we don't want to be a burden to other people or we don't want them to be hurt because of the time that we're going through. And, and this is what was on Naomi's heart when she had her conversation with Ruth. You know, she had just lost her husband. She lost her two sons. She wanted to be called Mara, which meant bitterness. She was in a tough headspace and she didn't want Ruth to stick with her if it wasn't what Ruth wanted because Naomi was, she was broken at this point. She was empty. She was angry at God. And she didn't know when she was going to get better. But Ruth stayed with her. She uttered these heartfelt words to encourage her mother-in-law and her friend. Likewise, Elisha says and does the same thing for Elijah. Although the circumstances were a little more positive, it was time for Elijah to ascend to be with God. He was one of two people that we read about in the Old Testament that didn't die. Um, they just got to go and be with God because of the, the powerful relationship that they had with him. And the other one, his name was Enoch, who God just like took him up while he was on a walk one day. Uh, but these two people, Elijah and Elisha, they traveled to these different schools where Elijah held leadership. They wanted He wanted to uh, encourage and strengthen these schools before he left to be with God. And each time they come out, all these students, they call them the sons of prophets. And they say, hey, Elisha, buddy, do you know what's going to happen today? And each time he comes out, he's like, yes, I know. Be quiet. Stop talking. And I love the Hebrew word for this phrase. It's called hush. That's how you pronounce it. Hush. Be quiet. You know, he emphatically just shushes them because he already knows what's going down. And, and each time Elijah tells Elisha, hey, stay here. Just go ahead and stay here. I'm going to go on ahead. God's told me to go to this place. And, and some people think that he keeps doing this kind of from a humility standpoint, that he doesn't want anyone to be there when he goes up to God uh, so that they can't take it back and brag about it and, and make a bunch of fuss over nothing while it is definitely out of the ordinary for most people. Uh, however, it's more likely that Elijah just wasn't sure if God had signed off on this thing. He wasn't sure if God would be okay with him bringing another person along to see everything that was about to go down. But it's after the three times that Elisha says, hey, as surely as the Lord lives and you live, I will never leave you. He's not going anywhere, so he takes that as it is, and he allows him to continue on this journey with him. How many of you would love to hear that from a friend? I know I would. I have in the past. I, I had about uh, a, a time, oh boy, it must be six years ago. I was going through a really, really tough time. I, I was at my lowest um, in my mental health. I, I've never felt worse than that. I had gone through a really tough breakup and some words were said to me that I just struggled with. Like it was a tough time and I was not being a good friend. You know, there were two people in my life that really walked closely with me during that time and, and they're still two of my closest friends today, but I had to apologize. I said, you know what, I, I have been living up to, to par, man. I, I'm not doing okay and I haven't treated you well in this process. I recognized even in my fragile state that the way I had interacted with them was self-centered. And, and I let them know and I apologize. And the wonderful thing about these two people, and they still stick with me through all of the good and the bad that I go through these days too, they accepted the apology, but they also let me know, hey, it's okay that you're not okay. And we're here um, and, and we know that you need us and we're here for that. And, you know, they shared the same sentiments with me as Elisha did with Elijah and as Ruth did with Naomi. You see, a large percentage of being a good friend is just showing up, being consistent and being encouraging with your presence. You reassure others by just sticking with them. That's one of the most godly disciplines that you can display. Something as simple as just telling your friend, 
hey, I'm glad we're friends. It's an easy one. You know, it's a wonderful encouragement. Show up and, and be with your friends through the good, like Elisha did with Elijah. He was about to encounter God on a way that no one else had encountered God at this time. And also during the bad, for that matter, like Ruth did with Naomi. She had experienced all of this tragedy and didn't know how she was going to survive this thing. But Ruth says, hey, I'm with you and we're going we're gonna to make it. This practice, it solidifies friendships and creates a spiritual bond that few things can break. So as we close here and, and as we approach the weekend and, and our discussion groups, be thinking through this question. Who is God leading me to be present with? See you guys next week.